make sure that, um, you know, we talking and stuff. Okay, she got us live streaming on YouTube. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is Torch, teaching others to reach Christ. Um, we ask that um, our social media family, y'all share, like, and tag, share, like, and tag. Um, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. This is Torch. We're going to be talking about discerning the voice of God. We've been um, dealing with um, discerning the voice of God by Priscilla Shire. We've been in this book. And when I tell you that it is a blessing, we have had a good time with this, learning and understanding how to get to the point where we are discerning his voice and the, not the voices of others. My name is AP Angela Francis, and I'm the director. I got my, one of my co-direct, well, all of my co-directors are on here. Uh, we praise God. Uh, Manny, he helps me, uh, Manuel Carter, uh, Pastor Roberta and Pastor Bagan. We want to first give an honor to God and also to our pastors. We thank you for giving us this opportunity to go forth. This is our torch ministry. Torch is teaching others to reach Christ, teaching others to reach Christ. And it is um, for ages 13 to 35, or if you feel like you're 35 or 13. All right. So um, many, are you, do you want to pray for us opening us up or someone else? I can pray. Okay. All right. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for getting us. Well, oh, we're not in the building. <laughs> thank you for allowing us to be, able to be on the live. Uh, thank you for helping this ministry grow more and more and more. Thank you for allowing us to be able to teach your word and understand your word more than ever. Lord, I ask that as we learn about hearing your voice, that you allow us to uh, look into your word and look into the surrounding uh, the surrounding things that we know and just learn everything that we possibly can. Uh, so that we are able to communicate better with you, Lord. And uh, yeah, we pray and ask that you give us have a, let us have a good day um, and a good teaching and a good lesson. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Manny, uh, you were there last week, right? You want to, yeah. you feel like giving a, a introduction to what we're doing tonight? Sure. Okay. Yeah, so <clears throat> tonight... What we're going to be talking about is she's going to give around like three, I guess, steps. Basically, they're talking about how the plan, like how we can make a plan. Right, wait, hold on. Three steps to help us make a plan for uh, discerning the voice of God. Right. And so if you weren't here last week, what we had talked about was uh, one of the things that we need to have if we want to learn about the, like, if we want to be able to discern the, the voice of God is we need a plan um, because if we're going from spiritually dead, we get baptized, we're alive in Christ, right? We're booming, we're, we're going, right? We go for, we're going from zero to everything, right? So if we're trying to hear or discern the voice of God, it is not something that we are just going to like be able to just do. Like we're not just going to be able to like, oh, like I'm baptized now, God can like speak to me and stuff like that. But we have to have we have to set a plan to how are we going to work on ourselves and work on our faith to the point of where we can hear the voice of God and He interacts with us more and more throughout our life. Um, and yeah, so what were the I guess the introduction inter, introduction I mean it's, for today is going to be that she's going to talk about uh, a plan that or three steps to you know helping us make a plan. And this plan can be different for many or different for different people, right? So for her, it could be, you know, uh, she's working on, uh, I don't know, stuff that she's going on with her life. And then another person is going through something totally different. So their plan is going to look very different from uh, Miss Angela's. And so we're just going to give, you know, a couple of like kind of broad steps in regards to like uh, getting, setting forth a plan for discerning the voice of God, but it's supposed to be a discussion. So don't be shy. Make sure you talk. Yes. <laughs> um, Make sure you come off a of mute and have a conversation. Yes. So, yeah, I guess that was like an introduction. We're talking about. It absolutely plans. was. Um, do you have any steps that you would say would be for you to um, delve more into discerning God's voice in your, in your life? Um, for me, 
I would say definitely fasting more, uh, like taking fast. Oh, that's Um, good. I would say fasting more, uh, reading, reading my word with more of a purpose more, uh, Mm -hmm. for me specifically, like I read the Bible like pretty like consistently, but when I do read it, it has become a thing like I do out of habit more so than a thing like I'm like genuinely trying to learn something um because like for like for me my testimony like a part of a part of my testimony is the fact that like the reason why I deep dived into the bible was it came from a sense of like doubt and a sense of like I want to know answers and now that like a lot of those answers have been like you know answered for me it uh I sometimes find it a bit hard to like you know Uh, try to learn more about the word but there's so many different things that I don't know there's so many things that I want to know so you know I feel like uh, with me for me a part of my plan would be like studying not just studying the bible just to study it but just studying it for a purpose right finding a purpose in what I'm studying the bible for and I think uh, lastly um, hmm, I guess I have studied in the Bible. Uh, oh, uh, taking my taking my gifts seriously. So, Right. Right. Oh, that's good. I love um, it. yeah, like for me, like I, I I know that God has given me somewhat of a gift of like teaching or explaining things, and so um, like with some of the like you know ministries that I help with and some of the things I do outside of church, I think that there are many ways that I could take. what God has given me more seriously um, because, you know, God doesn't need me to do something. So if he's given me something, he's given me the opportunity to use my gift for the good of his people, for the good of whatever he wants my gifts to be. And so I think I need to like, you know, take it more seriously that God has not just, not that I have the, not just that I have the gift, but that God gave me the gift for a reason. Um, so I guess like those would be like my three, like taking my gifts that God has given me seriously, studying my Bible more and um, taking fast more seriously. Oh, that's good. That is so, so good. And, you know, um, I was reading and the thing about it is, is that I love that you said um, that, you know, more fasting. Um, I think that us as young people and young people, we don't look at fasting as being a part of to learn the voice of God. And many of us just jump out there and we think that it's going to happen overnight. This generation Um, a lot of us, a lot of us, I mean, I've, I've done it before in my situations as well, is that I want it to happen now. Like, I want it to be done now. Like, why is it taking so long? I don't understand. Um, and so what we have to do is understand that God is, it's like a plan. You have to make a plan. You can't just jump out there because a lot of us jump out there and it's haphazard. And it's, you know, you end up missing something. You end up missing the voice of God because you just jumped out there and it's among chaos of your day or you're trying to just squeeze him in between, you know, test and this and this and this instead of actually scheduling a time, making a plan on how I'm going to understand and hear the voice of God better. Um, it's absolutely essential to work through a plan that's been organized ahead of time. not like just jumping out there. Um, we need a blueprint. All of us have to have a blueprint on God. What am, how am I going to do this? How am I going to start discerning and understanding that that is you speaking and it's not just, you know, haphazardly, you know, so, so many of us have to make that plan. I think my plan is one. I think mine is, um, I love, oh, I love that you said taking your gifts seriously, because I think a lot of us don't understand that God has placed gifts in our lives and we take it as if everybody has it. No, God has a special gift in each and every one of us. So that would be something that definitely would allow us to hear the voice of God better because we're taking what God has gifted and what he has placed inside of us more seriously. Like, man, like um, a lot of us don't think that we have it, the body of Christ. It's the body of Christ. So you have all these different members of the body, but each body part is important. 
like each body part has a function. So the same thing with us, we have to understand that we have to make a plan, get a blueprint on how we're going to be better. And one of them, I loved your answer, uh, Manny, was, you know, really taking your gift as in God, this is what you gifted me to do and taking it personal. I think that's a great first step. I think the other thing is um, to study more intentionally for me. Um, when I say intentionally, it's like organize my thoughts to, okay, I have a question about, let's say I have a question about healing. So I want to be more intentional on, okay, what about healing? What more can I see that God is about healing? And so I need to study that a little bit more intentionally. Um, we all can be better. We're all learning. We're all no matter how old you are or how young you are, you're always learning every day. You're learning something new. And so we need to begin to put God in that learning, in that education. Because I think a lot of us think about like college and, you know, stuff like that um, when we're talking about education. But we need to educate ourselves on the word of God so that we can get to know what God sounds like. What is he talking about? What is he talking to me about? What, you know, where is the steps? Where is my, so we have to put that in time. So one of the other things is making an intentional time for him. Whether it's first thing in the morning before I get out the bed or whether it's at night, um, just taking out time to, to sit, um, not just always. And the other thing is, I guess I can add this as step 3B or 3A is not always just talking about what's going on with me, but also adding, okay, God, I'm sitting here and I'm going to give you this 10 minutes to speak to me. And I want to really truly hear your voice. And because God is a gentleman, you hear him in your heart. Sometimes you do hear him audibly. If you, as you submit, as pastor says all the time, as you submit to the, the will of God, and as you continue to submit, and that's one of our words, one of our steps, is submitting to God. When we start to submit better and better and more and more, God will allow us to begin to hear him more and more in our ears and in our heart to know the right things that we're supposed to do. So I'm gonna open the floor for anyone else who would like to give some of their steps, their first three steps on what they're planning. How are they planning? What plans have you put, put in place to hear God's voice better? Anybody? Want everybody talk at once? Hello. Hey, AP, it's Tish. Hey, girl. Hey, so I have set me a timer because we all know that I lose track of time. Either I'm late or start focusing on work. So my first step was for me to set a timer and my timer is actually at 3.30 in the morning so that wow. I can go and start hearing his voice a little bit more because I'm more subject to listen to, well, Tish, you should do this, you should do that versus me actually listening to God mm -hmm. and my quality time when I'm baking is also with God too. My step number two is reading this book wholeheartedly and me wholeheartedly focusing on God this time because I will give up in a minute when life situations start lifting. So those are my two steps right now. I don't have three. I have two. Okay. Well, I really like, and I hope y'all are y'all heard her. She said, one is that you set a timer. And so I want y'all to hear that. Remember, we talked about that last week. We all have these smartphones, smartwatches and stuff like that. And that, you know, Tish, really you're being intentional. I just want to encourage you that you are being intentional about. So that is, is even one of your steps is being intentional. You're being intentional. 3.30 because that's before you um, get up and move about your day. And so that's being intentional. That's a that's a step. That's a step in your plan is being that's more huge, intentional. That's a huge step for me. Yes. Because I don't sleep very well and my phone starts going off about four or five o'clock in the morning from work. So I needed to be intentional because 
I am actually giving this run is my whole yes. And I'm actually trying and I want what God has for me. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, that's that's awesome. I love it. I love it. Anybody else? Anybody else? Hey man, AP, I just wanted to speak and say, wait, hold on. Our phones are hitting each other. Oh, okay. Okay. I just wanted to say that um, to the young adults that understand that God became perfection for you. And the reason why I wanted to say that is because a lot of what hinders us or stops us from moving forward at all is because sometimes we're actually looking for a time when we are dotting all of our I's, crossing all of our T's, doing what we believe God wants us to do. And so we figure I'll wait till then and then I'll start serving God or doing whatever. And that's probably the worst thing that you can do. Understand that Jesus became perfection for us because none of us will be perfect until we see God, until we actually go to heaven. Mm -hmm. And so just know that, that you are not perfect. God is not even looking for perfection in you. But if you are a parent, let me just say this. As a parent, I want you and, and even the older adult, older adults, what would your parent always tell you? I just want you to try. That's what your parent would always tell you. They, they, they would tell you, I would love for you to be an honor roll student. I would. But if you can't do that or if that's if 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 that's a far reach for you, then I just want to know that you're trying. And sometimes trying still gets you an F. Ooh. But it won't get you punishment as long as your parent knows that you're trying. So I know that sounds weird, but your parent won't even spank you for an F if they know that you did your best and you just are not getting it. Yeah. They're still not going to punish you. Because they yes. know the punishment comes when they see greater in you and you're not putting forth the effort. Mm -hmm. That's when the punishment comes. And so for for the young adults, what I want to say, what myself and um, um, Pastor P, um, he may even speak out, but we just want you to know that all God wants you to do is yes. try. And and let me just tell you, right now, you're making heaven smile just by joining the Zoom call. For some people, that's a task for them to even participate. Yes. But the fact that you made the effort to even be on the Zoom call, all of heaven is celebrating that. God celebrates everything that we do. As I've said before, God is not waiting to punish you. He's not looking for you to mess up so he can just whoop you. No, God is celebrating every time. You know, we mess up a lot, but then just think about those times when you go, oh my God, I did the right thing this time. Oh my God, I didn't do that this time. That's what he's looking for. He just says, just try. Just try. Just make an effort. Just, just do your best. If you are a young adult, and you are, you know, fornicating, because you know, go to what type of sex or whatever. Let's just say, um, let's just say fornicating. Okay. If you are, if you're bound in that or whatever, okay, but you find yourself and 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 you know, your boyfriend, girlfriend, or whatever comes to you and you say, you know what, not today. Guess what? You just made God proud. You just made him proud. You know what I'm saying? And so, but you, but then you say to yourself, 
But then what's going to happen when I mess up again? He's going to tell you, try again. The Bible says a good man falls seven times, but he gets back up again. The Bible does not say we're not going to fall. It says keep getting up. Amen. Amen. Pastor, I wrote that down in my book. That was good. I like that. God became perfection for us. Somebody should be, well, we don't have our books tonight, but uh, that's going to be one of our things that we need to write down is that God, God became perfection so that we wouldn't have to. So we, you know, we're, we're building, we're processing. Um, you know, like in the morning when you get up, I know me, I'm a piddler. So a lot of times like trying to get to work, I'm just be, I'm going to be real. I'm going to give y'all a testimony. Um, at night, I really should be picking out my clothes and stuff like that at night. And I have a tendency not to do that. So then when I get up in the morning, I'm piddling around trying to find clothes, but then I see something that I, I need to move or situate or clean or what, or sweep. And I'm doing all that in the morning. And then I'm, I end up being like two minutes late for work. And I was like, Lord, I need to do better. And this morning I got to work on time. I got to, um, I got I got to work on time so that I was able to, um, you know, that I can be better about my time. And that's another thing is so that I can organize my time. So I'm not running, running, running. And I'm sometimes don't, you know, I'll say, oh, good morning, Lord, and just keep it moving. And so me, even me, I struggle in that area, especially in the morning. So I want to better plan my days and plan my, um, my days and my time and be more intentional. Anyone else? I know Pastor P's on here. Um, Shanta, Kiara, I know um, Angel just joined. Hey girl, hey. Anybody else? Mine is whenever I wake up in the morning, I make sure that I pray and I, well, I read my Bible first and then I pray because I want my day to start off with me you know, speaking to God, um, not just, you know, getting up and starting my day, but making sure that I invite him in my day as yeah. well. Before I go to sleep, I pray and I I'll read my Bible as well. Me and my husband, we made a time at 1230. Um, we pray together. So wherever we at, we call each other and we pray on the phone as well as I try my hardest to pray with my kids, like either once a week or Sometime while we're all together, you know, either we at home or we're driving or whatever we're doing, I make sure that well, I try to make sure to um pray with them and I make sure that they pray at night. You know, just trying to make a routine for them because mm -hmm. they gotta see God as well. Um, I also try to make a a try to make a quiet time for myself so that I can hear God's voice and it's intentional to hear his voice. And I, I quiet my day down because, you know, I work at a doctor's office and, you know, it's a lot of noise and stuff. So I want to sit still and actually hear God on what he want me to do, either with my patients or how I need to, if I need to straighten up my face or whatever it is that I need to do, you know, he's going to get me together. My face says it all sometimes. So I tried to make my face match what I want it to look like, you know, because I want people to feel welcoming whenever they come around me. And I know my husband always say that I, I'm approachable because of my face. So I try to change my face expression so that, you know, you feel like, oh, Stacey is a nice person, you know. Um, also, don't be shaking your head, no. Also, um, I try my hardest to get to church on time, Lord. Pray for me. I'm serious. But because we all ride together, it's a struggle. I'm going to work on it. Pass some work on it this week. But yeah, that's mine. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Yay. Um, hey, Santa. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, mm -hmm. For me, incorporating music is always you know, time with the father. Yeah. And yeah. he allows you to be able to go in, especially when you get that right song and, you know, get the fire stirring. Um yes. the other thing um that I 
do with the kids. Um, I've uh, I've done this with them. We haven't done it in a little while, but every now and again, I'm gonna start back with them. But I wake up, I tell them, you know, good morning, and then they tell me good morning. I say, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. So I feed them scripture. I say, today, I'm glad to be alive. I'm glad for life, health, and strength. I'm glad to be able to see your smiling faces. And, you know, I said, and then I, it's like passing on. You know, what are you grateful for? So they have to repeat the Bible verse and then say what they're grateful for. Um, The other thing is like, um, you know, you everybody has to go in the mirror, brush your teeth, wash your face, or whatever. So put your little sticky note up. You know, hey, positive affirmations, some scriptures. Just tack them on. And so when you go in, you know you're reading that scripture and you're being at one with the Father. So um those are just like little simple things um that God has given me to incorporate. And I pass that down to the kids as well. Anyone else? Hello? Anyone else? Yes, Pastor. I'm sorry. Hey, go <laughs> ahead. I'm, I was listening while I'm trying to make dinner. I was like trying to rush to the phone. Um, two things before I get out of the bed, because I know once my feet hit the bed floor, it's a wrap. Um, so yeah. just laying in the bed, talking to God. And then the second one, um, because my school is across the street from my son's, it's always drop him off first and then rush to, you know, clock in across the street. Um, it's always um, a prayer with him, um, reminding him who he is and being confident and being focused while he's at, at school. So praying with him as well as praying my own personal time, um, that's definitely um, two acts of just being very intentional. So I just Amen. wanted to say that. Amen. That's no, that's awesome. Um, I think that's where we're talking about a plan is that we're being intentional about, okay, God, I want to hear you better. I want to hear you more. I want to hear you often you know what what plans are we getting so that we can hear his voice more often and louder in our ears above all the other voices because let's be honest the other voices are not going to be silenced but what we can do is that we can make his voice the loudest one in the step in the in our minds in our hearts and, and with everything the other thing we can do is ask him about anything and everything because even when you ask him, even a no is an answer. If you think about it, um, even even us parents, but young adults as well, when we um, when we talk to our child, they can't say that we didn't answer them. We just didn't say the answer that they want. And God, how much more so is God the same way? Is that we have to be intentional about you know um, listening for His voice. And it says, um, like in the mornings, you know, most parents, you know, we got to have some kind of plan because if you have more than one person, like if you're taking care of somebody, even us that um, maybe maybe you're at basketball practice. So before you leave the house, because, you know, by the time you hit basketball practice or football practice and then start your classes, it's it's an ongoing day. And so starting off in the morning, setting a timer those type of things. It says we aren't haphazard and arbitrary with a lot of things in our life, but what is most important, that's when you'll start making a plan when you understand that God is most important in our lives. Our health, retirement, monthly calendars, games, practices. Um, if you know you need to go for tutoring or whatever, you make those priority in your life. We should make God priority above all of that. So that our day does go better when we plan it out and when we take that time to really be intentional. Um, when we're really intentional on what we're gonna do. So um I'm gonna give us one, two, three, four, five words, and then um I can't see the time, y'all. Let me see time we are. I don't want to keep us too too long. Um the first thing we need to understand is each word, each word that I'm going to give 
I want um, each one of us to look up the scriptures. I'm going to give you a scripture. It says that one, let me go back. Genesis 22, two and three says, take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and his son, Isaac. And he cut the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. Genesis 22 and three. Let me read this a little bit. Um, <clears throat> if we don't put an intentional resolve, remember we've been talking about intentional resolve and strategic. We got to place a strategy. We got to come up with a strategy course for action, for following him in place. We're basically leaving it up into the air. Sus susceptible, below. okay, that word is just... Uh, susceptible to the flighty whims of our circumstances and our feelings. And listen, feelings come and go, okay? Today we like a person, tomorrow we don't. Yesterday we didn't like them, today we do. Um, you know, with kids, with little kids and teenagers and adults, we, oh, we like popcorn, but next week we might not want popcorn. We like vegetables this week, next week we don't. So our emotions and our actions and our feelings go up and down, up and down, up and down all day long. But if we're intentional and strategic about what we want to do and who we want to serve, then and we want to hear God and serve God more, more and more and more and more. Um, it says there's simply too much inter eternal treasure at stake. Our life, our our eternal life is at stake at this point. Our eternal life is at stake at this point because we have to, we have to, okay? Everybody say we want to go to heaven, but what are you doing strategically to get there? What are you doing strategically to understand his voice better and better and louder and louder so that it's above all the other stuff in our lives? Now, listen, don't take my word for it. I just read the scripture and I'm gonna read it again. We go to God's words for instruction. In the story of the patriarch Abraham, we found both the value and profitable results of making plans to obey. We'll start considering Abraham's story today and continue it through the throughout the rest. Okay, so it says, read Genesis 22, look for the following words and then fill in the blank. So everybody, if you got a pen or something or a little note where you can take notes, I'm gonna give you four words, four words, saddled, took, cut, and went. Saddled, S-A-D-D-L-E-D, -D -D, took, T-O-O-K, cut, C-U-T, and went, okay? And so like, for example, um, Abraham saddled. See, if you look at this, uh, just, just, just the scripture, not even the whole story, you see where God was strategically setting things up. But not only that, but Abraham was strategically following what God, his uh, following God's leading, okay, strategically and intentionally. He was intentionally listening to God, hearing his voice, discerning God's voice. And think about what if he hadn't discerned God's voice? As many of us know, uh, God told him to give Isaac as a sacrifice, right? But what if he didn't hear God's voice and didn't recognize that God was talking to him when God said, no, stop. What would have happened? Think about that. Okay, so I'm gonna read the scripture again. The words are saddled, took, cut, and went, okay? And I want you to write next to the East word what you hear in the scripture that uh, how Abraham strategically did and listened to the voice of God. God said, take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and his son, Isaac, and he cut the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. So what did he saddle? Anybody can come off a of muting and tell us. What did he saddle? 
Anybody? What did he saddle? In Genesis 22, 2 and 3, the scripture I just read, what did Abraham saddle? He saddled the donkey. Won't everybody speak at once? I told y'all, y'all can come off a of mute and talk to me. And then um, number two, he took what? What did he take? Let me see. I'm going to call some people out. Let me see. Manny, what did he take? I don't know. He might not be feeling good, so he might not be able to come off a of mute. He took his son. Hey, man, Tish. Come on now. Talk to talk to a sister. He also took what? He took somebody with his son. Mm. <laughs> the two the two workers, right? Yes, he took two of the men, young men with him. Yes, yes, yes. I got my daughter listening with me too. So we both Okay. Here. Praise God. Hey. <laughs> The next one is he cut. What did he cut? Anybody? Kiara? Shanta, what did he cut? He cut the wood. It's Minister yeah. Almez. <laughs> yes, I was trying to stay the... quiet and let everybody else answer. <laughs> it's okay. I'm I'm calling out people now because everybody acting shy. Uh, <laughs> okay, so he saddled the donkey. Then he took the the son and the two young men. Then he cut the wood. And last but not least, he went to what? Anybody? Giovanna? Angel? He went what? He went to the land of Moriah. Thank you, honey. Yes, he went to the land of Moriah, but he went to the place at which God had told him. Because God said in the beginning, God's plan, his strategic plan was take your son, go to the land of Moriah, offer him as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I'm going to tell you to go to that mountain. So that's what he did. He followed and he obeyed. But listen, if he hadn't been able to hear and discern the voice of God, not only would he have heard, just not heard the beginning, but had he not, what would have happened if he hadn't been able to recognize God's voice when God told him, when, I got a paper cut, y'all, it's hurt. Um, when God told him not, to sacrifice his son he had already put him on there he was about to light the fire underneath his son and god said no stop and he off and he had a ram in the bush so think about that what if he wouldn't have heard think about so many things in our lives that we probably most definitely i know me if i would have waited and took the time to hear god's voice in my situation or in a choice or in a decision that I was making, even though God knew that I was going to make that choice or that decision, but had I waited, how much better it would have came out. I know I have a lot of testimonies like that. A lot. A lot. So um, Old Testament sacrificial rituals were quite laborious. The process was painstakingly detailed and time consuming, not to mention messy with all that slaying and dismembering going on. But in reading a short, concise record of it, like we see here in Genesis 22, appearances can be deceiving. The summary of Abraham's activity in verse three, outside of the emotional torment invoked by verse two, makes the whole thing sound rather easy. Yet the assignment Yahweh gave to Abraham could not have been accomplished on a whim. No haphazard spontaneity would enable Abraham to follow through on his mission. It was too arduous and meticulous of a task to accomplish without adequate preparation we all have to make preparation in order to obey in order to hear in order to move and do the things that god has asked us to do um <clears throat> strategy intentionality accountability and dedication to detail 
Each of these would be required in orderly in order to fully obey God's directive. We have to put these things into play. Um, before I finish out our lesson for tonight, I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you five words and I'm gonna give you scriptures. And so our homework, I know I keep giving y'all homework, huh? But I really want you to delve down in this um in this planning on how to discern the voice of God and how to hear God above all the other voices. So the first one is you have to prepare. You have to make preparation. Nehemiah, that scripture is going to be Nehemiah 2, 7 through 9, and 13 through 15. The next one is strategy. You have to come up with a strategy. You have to come up with ways that you're going to be able to hear his voice and to um, obey his voice. That's Ephesians 6, 11 through 13. Ephesians 6, 11 through 13. Accountability. That's the next step in order to make this plan. Accountability. You have to take accountable for yourself. You can't take accountability for somebody else and somebody else can't take your accountability. You have to take accountability for yourself. That's Ecclesiastics 4, 11 through 12 intentional we've been talking about that all night since we got on here even through each and other each and other blah, blah, each other's answers we've been talking definitely about being intentional being intentional about what we want to hear from god why we want to hear from god how are we going to hear from god how am i going to obey god and again keep striving at it pastor said it earlier you got to keep doing it keep doing it try you never know what you can do until you try. If you keep saying, oh, I don't like this or I, I need to do this and I need to do that and I need to do this, but you never actually put step out, you never actually step into it and start trying it, you'll never know what you can do and what God can do through you. But you have to take that step and say, you know what, I'm gonna do it for five minutes today or I'm gonna do it for 10 minutes tomorrow or 15 minutes. And before long, you'll notice that you won't even need that timer or you won't need to know, okay, well, I did my 10 minutes. Before long, as you keep doing it, as you keep striving, as you keep trying it, you'll notice that you'll be longer and longer because that is such a sweet place when you can be, when you can talk to God and God can talk to you. The one thing about God is he's not going to tell your secrets. He's not going to call nobody and ask them what they think they should what they think he should do about it. That's a one-on-one -on -one conversation. It is nobody's business but you and God. So you don't have to worry about somebody blasting you on Facebook, blasting you on Twitter, blasting you on Instagram, blasting you on TikTok, talking about story time. Okay, you don't have to worry about that because that's not who God is. He loves us and he wants us to communicate with him. He wants us to talk to him. But not only does he want us to talk to him, but he wants us to be able to hear him and, and make those decisions that he gives us to do. Amen. So intention, intentionality is Colossians 3, 1 through 2. And then dedication, Daniel 1 through 8. Those are five things that we can do if incorporate into our plan. It's preparation, strategy, accountability, intentionality, and dedication. And dedication is Daniel 1 through 8. I'm going to give those scriptures again, and then we'll go ahead and open the floor if anyone has um, questions or if you just have something to add to the lesson, we can go ahead and do that, okay? So preparation is Nehemiah 2, 7 through 9, 13 through 15. Strategy, you have to come up with a strategy. Ephesians 6, 11 through 13. Accountability, Ecclesiastics 4, 11 through 12. Intentionality, Colossians 3, 1 through 2. And dedication, that's Daniel 1 through 8. 1 through 8. So those are um, those are things that we will discuss next week. I want you to read those scriptures this week. I want you to meditate on those scriptures. And next week we'll talk about those different steps and what those scriptures, what in those scriptures jump out at you? 
What did it mean to you? What did you find at that time? And take five minutes to meditate, to pray and say, God, I not only do I want to tell you what's going on with me, but I want to hear you too. Anyone, I'm going to open the floor now um, for any um, com comments, um, questions, anything. Anybody? And thank you all for your, your um, comments and doing your homework. Hello, everyone. This is Kiara. Sorry, I couldn't unmute my phone earlier, so I wanted to say my um, my little piece of the yes. homework from last week. I know I wasn't there, but I did watch y'all online. So for me, what I normally do daily is when I lay down, <clears throat> what time I lay my head on the pillow, I'm going to talk to God. And I do that intentionally because it's almost like, you know, in the natural world, you know, like if you have a spouse or anything, you know, you hear that quote that it always says, you know, don't go to bed angry or don't go to bed not talking to your spouse. So I intentionally make a purpose to make sure that I don't go to bed without talking to God. Mm -hmm. So um, and then in the mornings, I always wake up and my my AP, my mother-in-law, my mama, Pastor Berta, they're both on here. They know I do this and I've been doing this for a long time. I intentionally make sure that I wake up and I text them every morning and I say, good morning. I love you. Right. So if I'm doing that in the natural, then I make it a purpose to wake up and acknowledge God. So mm. whether that's waking up and I always I'm sorry, y'all lavender in the background, she having a little fit. But I always wake up in the morning and I always go to Proverbs. And the reason why I do Proverbs is because it has 31 chapters. So for me, myself, one of my clients told me this like years ago when I was telling her how I wanted to get close to God. I wanted to build my relationship with him. She said, OK, I want you to start with Proverbs because there are 31 chapters every day on that day. You can read a ver that chapter. So every wow. morning when I wake up and I send out my messages to my mamas and my fiance and all my family that, you know, I make it a point to, before I do that, read my scripture. And that helps me start my day because we never know what's going to happen on a day to day. So I make sure that I'm communing with God and I'm building that relationship with him there. And of course, after I read my scripture, I'm going to thank him for allowing me to just wake up and breathe another day. Um, I mean, I heard Shantus mention something about something she does with her kids. Of course, we're steward over our kids' life. God blessed us with them. Um, something I've been doing with my kids since they were younger too is before they leave the house, they walk to the bus. So before they leave, I tell them, "Hey, say your All Father's prayer." So they'll say their All Father's prayer in the morning, and for me, that's covering them as they're going throughout their day because we don't know what's going to happen when they step out the door. Another thing is I don't do this all the time, but I'm starting to pick up the habit more frequently. I have prayer oil in my house. I'm an intercessor. So what do I do? When God gives me those unctions at night, I get up and everybody getting prayer oil. Everybody getting prayed over because I don't know what the enemy, what traps. We don't know what traps he's setting for us ahead of time. We don't know. We just live in our life day, day by day, but he has a plan to destroy us because he hates that we are being committed to God and we're building a relationship and we're trying to get close to God. And the more you try to get close to God, the more the enemy is going to try to attack. So when you get that unction, when you get that feeling, pray, L lay that, that oil over your kids, over your family, over your house. I will walk through my house and I will put oil on everything in this house. <laughs> I will put oil on the mirror. I will put oil on every doorpost. Why? Because that's covering for me and my house. And I feel like that's a good tip for every other people, too. If you feel like you want, you know, things to move and things to shift, then we just have to be consistent with God. So for me, that's my thing, my things that I do that helps me stay strengthened and disciplined in God. And that helps me by reading my scripture every day. It helps me to get in my word. It helps me to talk to him. And then even throughout the day, if I'm going through stuff like lavender, she whining right now. Y'all, she be aggravating. <laughs> so if throughout the day, if she aggravating me, I just stop for a moment and I'll be like, all right, God. Like, <laughs> you know, help us out because she getting on my nerves. 
but that's my child that he blessed me with. So I got to deal with her. But I just want to put my nugget in. I just want to say I love the lessons. Um, I may not be at the church all the time, but I'm always listening. Um, and I just love it. So, amen. That's all I had. Amen. Anyone else? No, Manny? Oh, here we go. Anybody else? Anyone else? It can even be off this topic. It can be from a week before or a week last week or last month. Mm. Uh, what's it called? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Oh, okay. So, like, for me, um, I think that, like, I, I had a... Basically, I prayed to God, like, basically asking, like, for... I guess you could say, I wouldn't say confirmation, but it was more so just like, you know, praying, like asking God to like, to hear God basically. And I think like I had, I had that prayer. I had that prayer. And then um, literally like, I think a day later is whenever my stomach started acting up. Right. And so like my stomach starts acting up or whatever. And like, it turns out like, I can't like, like, I basically can't eat, like, whole foods and stuff like that. So, like, I'm eating a bunch of, like, like applesauce and, like, pudding and, like, a bunch of, like, you know, nuts and berries, stuff like that. And it was, I, it was kind of funny because, like, I think a week before, I had the idea of, like, I should do a fast. And, but, mm. like, I, I, like, I didn't, like, I didn't take heed to that thought. Like, I was just like, eh, I don't really want to. And now yeah. I'm, like basically in a state where i have to fast like i i can't eat any like whole foods so it's like i feel like it was like i found it like kind of funny well funny is a shrug because like, i'm in pain <laughs> <I got you. laughs> but, <laughs> yeah um but yeah it's like one of those things where like god he talked like he did respond to my prayer and it's like everything and the way that he responded was like in a way that like everything was molded together where like i understood it and it made all made sense in, like to me you know, so that was like what I found pretty interesting. But yeah, that was it. Which, you know what, that's, it's funny because that's a lot of times that's God giving us that direction even before, you know, something else will happen, you know? So I get it. I get what you're saying about being funny. It being funny. Anyone else? I don't know, if Pastor P, are you in a place so you can close us out or you want us to go ahead? Hey, AP. Yes, 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 Mr. Alma. I just wanted, just real quick, um, just to say that, you know, week over week, the lessons have definitely been really great, especially with our um, youth and young adult. And then also for us, like right now, um, I ordered a book for myself that's called um, <clears throat> Reversing the Curses in Emotions. And mm -hmm. I felt like the lesson that you taught on with... Um, with Abraham just being able to know that this was his only child right and you have to think about the emotions that he went through already in the beginning when yeah. God told him that he was going to bless him and his wife with a child but that it was going to be a great nation so it was going to be many and God took him out there and like gave this analogy to him about can you count the stars can you count the sand none of that he could do and even though they did not get this child in their human timing, there was a strategic time that God had for them. Then God gave Abraham st strategic instructions on what to do with uh, with Isaac. And so by him doing that, it was it was just showing that sometimes our emotions and our feelings, we can keep them in the front center because it's like, OK, well, you told me I was going to have this. You told me I was going to do this. And that can be so big and it can be a mental, it can really be a mental blockage. And if our mental is not in a stable place where it's focused on God and pulling down all that, all that stuff where we are guarding our minds, guarding our heart. And that was something that I feel that Abraham really had to do. He really was guarded because the enemy could have came in with any crack in his mind and he could have literally derailed him to where he would not have com did the promise. He would not have completed out the, the instruction and did the promise what God had for him to do. And so I feel like the lesson is really, especially when you mentioned about what all did he do, the instructions. 
we have to be really structured mentally, structured emotionally, structured spiritually, because if we're not structured in those areas, it can seep over and it can uh, deminimize us physically where we do become sick, where we do become ill, where we do become, you know, where we're not able to uh, move like we should. We become physically ill where it's hard for us to get up because we let a gate open and we did not follow the instructions that God told us to do, which is the helping for us. So anytime when God wake us up in those wee hours of the morning, sometimes it's not just an early morning bathroom break that's an early morning get in front of your mind get in front of your heart get in front of your spirit because there's been some things circulating that is concerning you that the enemy is going to try to hurt you with and I feel when we do that and we own that alignment with God we just literally we didn't sacrifice ourselves, but we literally sacrificed the very thing that the enemy was going to try to use to hurt us so that's what I took from the lesson on tonight. And like what, especially when you brought out instructions is to instruct to structure the very thing, what God is calling us to do in this season. So amazing job. Anyone else? So let me go over those, these words real quick. And then if Pastor P, I don't know if Pastor P doesn't do it, uh, Manny, you can close us out. Um, preparation is Nehemiah 2, 7 through 9, 13 through 15. Strategy, Ephesians 6, 11 through 13. Accountability. That's a big one in um, society right now is us taking accountability for ourselves. Ecclesiastic, because we always want to blame somebody else. Ecclesiastics 4, 11 through 12. Intentionality, Colossians 3, one through two and dedication, Daniel one through eight. Pastor P, I don't know if you will do. Yes, ma'am. I don't know if Pastor P or through group text, whatever is easy. So okay, that, I'll put it on the yeah. group text. Mr. Mc, the Mr. just mentioned that. <laughs> we wanted to go back and be able to meditate on that. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Anyone else? Pastor P? They may not be in a place to um, do it. So I'm, I'm gonna make some announcements real quick. Um, April 27th, if you would like to go with me, I will be um, preaching a conference. Uh, it's nine to four. It is free and they do have lunch. You can get a t-shirt for $15. Um, but if you want a t-shirt, I need, to, can you please text me or let me know you're coming and how many are coming with you and then t-shirt sizes. I need that as soon as possible. And then tomorrow night at, um, tomorrow night, seven o'clock at our church, we got Bible study. And listen, if you haven't been a part of this Bible study, you are missing out. Um, the book Experiencing God, I don't have it in here, it's in my bedroom. Um, the book Experiencing God, listen, get the book. You can get, uh, pastors told us last week that we can get the book, uh, I mean, the week before, that you can even get a used copy of the book for like five, six dollars. Get the book, study it, meditate. This can be a part of your strategy to hearing God's voice. This can be a part of your strategy to grow in God, to build up your spiritual muscles. You need it. We need it. And get your fill up tomorrow. Get your fill up tomorrow. Um, so I will see you guys next week. Same time, but in the building, as far as I know, if anything changes, I will let you guys know. I'm a, one more time, Pastor P. Shine the weight on him. Okay, Manny, can you close this out tonight? If there's no other. Oh, and listen, we're going to start sowing into our church. We need to sow into our church. So if you have an offering, you can send it to IWC HOU, which is the cash app, IWC HOU, or you can sell at Leaders Academy TX at gmail.com. Okay, go for it, Manny.
All right. It was an amazing lesson. All right. Um, <clears throat> Father God, thank you for this lesson. Thank you for allowing us to be able to have this opportunity to go to you as a group and come to you and learn as a group as well. Uh, thank you for, once again, as always, being a God that talks to your creations, uh, being a God that gave us a entire book <laughs> about you, Father God. Um, we thank you for allowing us to be able to talk to you and allowing us to be able to grow and have a relationship with you. And I just ask that as we go throughout our week that we are able to um, use our plan together and use our plan, uh, use our plan to better help us with um, becoming more accustomed to hearing your voice. And so, Father, I thank you for what you have done, what you are doing now, and what you will do in the future. I pray safety, even though we're all at home. I pray safety in the homes. Um, and I pray safety as we go to work, school, etc. 